Hi everybody, Sean here at Go Big Bore or Go Home. Welcome back. Sorry I've been gone for a while, but finally delivering as promised the video about the new big beast we have, the Magnum Research BFR. This is uh, chambered in 500 JRH. Uh, I wanted to get a 50 caliber for a long time and I went with this round and we'll get into that in a little bit, but let's talk a little bit about the revolver. Now, BFR stands for Big Frame Revolver, and that's all it stands for, right? Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Anyway, this um, is modeled very much after the Ruger Blackhawk, uh, specifically after the Super Blackhawk. I'm going to show you one here. <clears throat> this is my Ruger Super Blackhawk in 44 Magnum, as you can see, very similar. And uh, I even have the same whole grip on it. And there's a reason for that. The, the Black Hawk and Super Black Hawk are very well built single actions, but these were built to be sturdier. They're built to be bigger framed, hence the name. And they're built for bigger calibers. I mean, when you, when you have a company called Magnum Research, you know you're not shooting 22 here. So, <clears throat> pardon me. Essentially, what we have here is, you know, uh, a single action that, as I'm going to show, has a little bit bigger frame than its predecessor. You can see it's definitely a bigger frame. Built to handle large handgun calibers with a lot of recoil. And the 500 JRH does not disappoint. This gun kicks pretty hard. Um, one of the reasons I got this Pockmeyer grip, here's the stock grip. Uh, the stock grip actually has this nice cover for the frame, which the hoe grip does not but it also has this check ring. Now, they did think smart enough to guard you against the trigger guard here, but this check ring actually, when, when I shoot it, was cutting open not only my thumb, but my brother's thumb. And so I went with this to get a different texture. Uh, also, small known fact, a lot of people think this is Hoger Pockmeyer. It's actually made by Uncle Mike's. I didn't know that till I took it off. And on the inside, it's got the Uncle Mike's logo. So who'd have known? Anyway, uh, I put on the Hoge grip, I like the finger grooves. Again, it's got this protection from the trigger guard. If anybody out there has ever shot like a Bisley, like that 480 Bisley I have, um, you can bust a knuckle on it so easy. So this, this has really uh, been a big help for that. And it's easier on my thumb. Although I will point out that the texture here can still be a little bit abrasive um, where on my thumb. So I have to be a little bit careful. And from time to time, if I plan on shooting a lot of rounds through it when I'm sitting down for the day, if I'm sighting it in or I just want to get a lot of practice in, I will usually put on athletic tape just to cover up my thumb because it hurts. You know, I'm serious when I say that I've literally taken skin off and I'm bleeding. Um, the recoil is big, but it's manageable. Um, I would encourage anybody who's looking for a 50 to check this cartridge out. It's manageable. The gun is of good weight, so it's easy to control. And uh, one of the things that's particularly fun about this revolver, you see the spare cylinder here. Well got it loaded. This is a cylinder that's actually in 50 Action Express. So this is the Desert Eagle 50 caliber round. I'm going to flip it over so you can see the bullets. They, uh, there's quite a bit of range there. The JRH is a 1.4 inch cartridge, uh, brass cartridge that is, whereas the 50 Action Express here is 1.285 like your standard 44 Magnum. So you can see here between the two, um, the JRH is definitely the big brother. Here, hang on. There you go. So, also, a um, couple of things about the 50 Action Express cartridge. This was designed for the Desert Eagle in a semi-auto, uh, and it was designed to fit a certain overall length. So, the bullet cross-sectional density isn't that great. It's not bad, don't get me wrong. But if you're hunting, especially for large game, you'd be better served by something like the 500 JRH. Um, some other cartridges in this caliber, you know, obvious. We'll get to that in a second. But... Yeah, this was an additional $350 option. They fitted it at the factory when I ordered the gun. And uh, yeah, now I can shoot both cartridges. Again, because this cartridge, or I mean, this firearm for me is more for having fun and plinking at the range, I thought it would be kind of a fun investment. Um, my purpose for it, other than the range, is really grizzly defense. Um, it's rare, but I do occasionally go camping and hiking in areas that have grizzly. And uh, when I do, you know, 44 Magnum is a great cartridge, but if you're talking about an 800 to 1200 pound Grizzly, depending on where you go, uh, it, it, I just don't feel it's got enough power. But something like this, you know, this is a 440 grain uh, hardcast bullet from Cast Performance. 
Um, this is a hand load, but I actually loaded it to verified specs through my chronograph of roughly about three, 1,325 feet per second. So it's got a ton of power. I'll put the TKO on screen for you. Um, but it's just a great cartridge for that. Now, a couple things about the BFR that have changed in the upcoming days, if you're looking to get one. They've gone with this new grip that's now designed by Hogue. Not this style, it's no finger grooves. It looks almost like a Bisley grip, but it's rubber. I'm interested to see that, um, see how that feels. They also changed the hammer here. This hammer spur is open wide and it's got a nice um, ridged area to really help you grab it when you cock the hammer. They changed this from the Blackhawk style here that you see to uh, kind of one that comes out an angle like this. And where I want to give MRI some credit is I recently spoke to them about it. And I said, you know, I'm looking to get another one. What would it be to put this hammer on it? And they said, well, check out the new hammer. We changed it around a little bit. To their credit, he even said it, you know, we've heard from our customers, they don't like the new hammer, they like the old one, so we redesigned it already. Uh, a lot of credit, guys, you know, a lot of people will just force it down their customers' throats, you guys listened. <coughs> we really appreciate that. Um, they also redesigned the rear sight. Now, if you want to take a look here, <coughs> on this site, you can see that's a Ruger logo, but I didn't put this on there. This Ruger logo is because it's a Ruger site. They recently designed it so they could put their own site on there. Um, I've heard some good things about that new site. Uh, one ch other change that I've made to mind besides the grip is I put on a high-vis site. I got this from Magnum Research's website. So it is, in fact, a Magnum Research um, compatible part. So it's not, you know, this wasn't jerry-rigged. A couple of great features about the BFR and all the BFRs that I really like. They epoxy on your housing for your ejector rod so it doesn't come loose. For those of you out there who are familiar shooting big, big, powerful calibers, this screw is going to come loose. Even if you use blue Loctite, it's still going to come loose and you have to tighten it from time to time. So it is what it is. Another feature that's nice is a lot of the internals, while not 100% identical, are very, very similar to a Ruger Blackhawk. So if you've worked on, handled, um, <clears throat> cleaned, shot, hunted with Blackhawks, Going to be very familiar. It's going to, you're going to feel like home. It's just a bigger version. Uh, one of the other things I like, and uh, hey Ruger, if anybody there is listening, this to me is the greatest feature ever. Greatest change in a product since bread got sliced the spin free Paul. You notice there's no clicks because it just spins free and it goes clockwise, counterclockwise. It makes it really easy. You know, if you want to load in a round, for example, we'll take one of these. If you want to load in a round and shoot it, Normally on a Ruger, you have to spin it uh, clockwise only and click, click, click. And if you overshoot it, oh no, now you got to do it again. Well, with this one, you know, because it can spin counterclockwise, you can actually just put it right there. You can see the edge of the rim. So for me right now, if I pull the hammer back, it'll be right under that hammer. So that's a really great feature, that uh, spin-free pull. Really like that a lot. <clears throat> Uh, a couple things now, um, moving on to the cartridge. Well, why 500 JRH? There's a number of reasons. Now, first of all, just to give you an idea of size difference, here is the 50 barrel, and there's the 44 Magnum. So quite a big difference. But the 500 JRH uh, came, you know, I, I thought about what caliber 50 I wanted to go with for a long time, and I went with the 500 JRH for a few reasons. Now, to be blunt, I didn't want to do a 500 Smith & Wesson Magnum because of a couple reasons. One, it is more power than I really want or need. And given that it actually did bruise my hands, it just didn't seem like I was going to enjoy shooting it. I was going to have to load it down a lot. And I kind of felt like, well, if I'm going to load it down a lot, what's the point? Uh, when I looked at some other 50s, the 50 Action Express, you either had to get a revolver in it, which to me, if you're going to get a revolver, that makes the, the cartridge you should just get something better with it. It's cool to have the extra cylinder for it because it's a lot of fun, but if I, you know, you can hunt medium-sized game with it if you really want, but really, again, this is, these cartridges, the JRH cartridges are going to be better. So, for me, it was just a no-brainer between the two. Now, the other options I had, of course, were to get something custom-made in 500 Linebaugh, which, to me, that really is one of the best 50 calibers ever made. And John Linebaugh deserves a lot of credit because he really took big bore cartridges to the next level when he created that uh, on a Bisley. And his 475 also just deserves a lot of credit. So I wanted something that was going to be ballistically similar. 
So my other two options there are going to be the 500 Wyoming Express, which is a ballistic twin of this cartridge, or the 500 JRH. Now here's the reasons why I like the JRH. If we talk about what its original intention was, it was designed around 2004 is when it was finally released. But the goal of it was Jack R. Huntington, hence JRH, uh, and he's told me this himself, Jack, if you're watching, I really can't thank you enough for all the time you spent talking to me and giving me information about this cartridge, as well as a few other things about big bore shooting. Seriously, folks, um, a really nice guy, very forthcoming with his information. Uh, I, I owe him a six pack or I owe him a you know, Starbucks card or something. Maybe I should go to his shop in Nevada and clean his shop for a day or two. Um, but he's very nice. Um, he designed the cartridge initially with two thoughts in mind, to get a 50 caliber to fit into a Freedom Arms 83, because when you went with the line ball, the both the cartridge, because it was a 0.510 instead of a 0.500, and because it had a bigger rim, it, you couldn't really get it in the cylinder. So they took it out of the cylinder, uh, and you, or they took out the cylinder, you'd have to make a new cylinder, and boom. So with the 500 JRH cartridge, now you could literally bore out the cylinder, put a new 50 caliber barrel on it, and you had a 50 caliber 83. Now about a year after he finished designing it, uh, Wyoming Express, not to be outdone, well, I'm sorry, not Wyoming Express, um, Freedom Arms, not to be outdone, and it's their own proprietary gun, so they made their own proprietary caliber called the 500 Wyoming Express. Um, ballistically, it's pretty similar. Um, Cartridge-wise, it's a it's all it's got a belted rifle cartridge i don't know the specific purpose that for that it does make the the case head a little stronger so it's not like it doesn't help it does um but to me when you've got you know the 500 line ball you've got the 50 action express you've got the 500 jrh you got the 500 smith and wesson and none of them have that what's the point i i, I don't get it um but again you know i'm also not john baker i'm not the guys at freedom arms so i you know, there may be a good reason for it, and maybe they'll, maybe I'll be able to find out one day. Um, but so I liked this because it, it's it's already chambered in a gun, and the 500 Wyoming Express is only chambered in the Freedom Arms, and good God, they're expensive. So this was a more affordable firearm. It's about the same price as a Smith and Wesson X frame gun. Um, and the cartridge really has just all the power I would ever need, ballistically speaking. Uh, like I said, it's similar to the 500 line ball. It's identical to 500 Wyoming Express. If I was a handgun hunter, I, I'm confident there isn't an animal alive this gun could not comfortably take. You just have to load it right. And that was the other reason that I liked it is because this cartridge is essentially based sort of on the 500 Smith & Wesson brass. And I say sort of because it's not exact, but if you take a 500 Smith & Wesson piece of brass, which is going to be uh, 1.6 inches long, it's about there, cut it down to the 1.4 inches of this cartridge, which is identical to the line ball cartridge, and if you have the rim turned so it's a little smaller, it fits again, and you can see this is properly head stamped brass I have here for you, it fits with the turned rim into that cylinder for the Model 83, whereas what what Magnum Research did is they actually cut the cylinders with the recessed rim area big enough that you can take a Smith & Wesson piece of brass, cut it down, leave the rim alone, load it up like to 500 J or, like it's a 500 JRH piece of brass and load it in. Does it work? Yes, I've done this. I've actually cut some 500 Smith & Wesson brass, loads up just fine. Um, one other reason for getting this is not only is the gun there, you can buy ammo for Buffalo Boar. It's expensive, guys. It's very pricey. But you can buy it from them. So it is technically not a Wildcat. You can buy brass from Buffalo Boar. They're the only people who stock it right now because uh, Starline made a run of brass for them. I think it was about 80,000 pieces. Three or 30,000 they used for loading ammo. They're selling the other 50,000. But if for any reason you can't find brass or you don't want to pay those prices, you can go to Smith & Wesson Brass and cut it down. So that makes this cartridge easy to load, easy to find components for. The 500 uh, bullets, instead of being the .510 or .511 of the line ball, are much easier to find. So you have easier to find bullets. You, you, if you can't find brass, you can make brass. You have an affordable firearm as big bores go to, to, to use for it. I mean, it's really a, a fantastic uh, decision. And for me, I have to be honest, like I said, the recoil is a lot. It, it's, it's a big beast to contend with. 
Uh, don't get me wrong, my, my promo of it being Godzilla is, is not off. It's a lot of power and it will kick and let you know this is a 50 caliber pistol. But a little practice and patience and it's controllable. Um, it won't beat you to death. Um, and it's got all the power you'd ever need. So for me, it's like, why go to a 500 Smith & Wesson? Why get a custom gun? Why be forced to go to Freedom Arms when I've got everything I need right here? And it really is just a great cartridge. I really think if you're going to, if my opinion, and it's just my opinion, if you're going to buy a 50 and you're serious about either hunting with it or bear protection, or if you're like me and you just want to shoot some big stuff because it's fun, this is the 50 I recommend. Uh, because I think the 500 Smith & Wesson is a bit of a beast. The 50A is cool, but it's, it's cool because it's in the Desert Eagle um, and it's not as versatile. The 500 JRH is everything you need, nothing less. So that's pretty cool. Um, just to give everybody a quick before I go. So I've got a 350 grain here. I loaded this to about 1315. This is next to a uh, 454 Casul. So you can see they're about the same length, but the 50 is uh, clearly bigger. And then let me put it up against the 44 Magnum for you guys. So, you know, you can see it really dwarfs the 44 Magnum. It makes the 44 Magnum almost look like a 9 millimeter. <laughs> well, it'll be shorter, but you get the idea. So that's it, guys. I'm going to put some videos up for you of me shooting it. Um, I think you're really going to like it. I think you're going to find it really fascinating. And it's, uh, it so far has been really great. It has exceeded my expectations. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this. Hope it wasn't too long. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you guys again soon. And remember, go big boar or go home.